guys, as promised, we are back on the 40 horsepower build. This is Jason with JW Classic VW. Yeah, I've been working on this 40 horsepower build for a while, so after the intro, we're getting right back into things. There is a long, like, I don't know, what is this, like the 13th video? 13th, 14th video on the 40 horsepower build, so check it out over here or over there, up in the corner, the uh, playlist to get caught up. Uh, what we have done so far, well, quite a bit, and uh, why do we have things apart? Mm, yeah, it's all kind of broken apart. And uh, we're taking a couple steps backwards before we can move forwards. So after the intro, guys, get right into that, and I'll see you in a second. All right, guys, welcome back. And if you didn't know already, we got to say hi to Goose. What's going on, Goose? All right, real quick, you guys can see I've got the uh, my tool here for removing the springs from the head. One of the things that I want to bring up that uh, one of the viewers caught out there is that the springs, I had installed them in the wrong way to get to reverse them around. And real quick check on that is when you guys are checking your springs for bind, you, know, you wanna be able to fit about 60 thou, about 50, 60 thou, uh, it fully compressed the spring. Because if you have too much bind, which means the spring is getting too compressed, they can wear out the spring prematurely and it'll break. I've had that happen before, so. It was a good catch. These springs are from CB Performance. I went ahead and swapped them out with the stock ones that were in here. These are like a stock replacement from CB Performance. Give us a little bit more spring pressure. These heads have been <clears throat> fully rebuilt. Uh, new valve seats, all that good stuff. Uh, I did some porting inside of here, which you guys can't really see, but uh, yeah, check out one of the previous videos that I've done as part of this 40 horsepower build on the head work that's already been performed. We've got the pistons and cylinders out. Why? Because we are adding a 30 thou shim. These shims are MP shims, MP 30 thou shims. And I'm hoping that these give me the space that I need off the deck to get my rocker, my rockers to be a little bit more off the head so that I can use the stock push rods. Because right now, these, these are the stock size push rods. These aren't the stock push rods because you know they look a little different, but these are stock aluminum type push rods that you can pick up. And I got these ones from CB Performance. So I want to be able to have those work with the uh, rockers, the solid rockers that we built up guys. So let me go ahead. I got a little bit of work to do, put it all back together, test fit it. I've already re CC'd the heads because you know, I forgot what the CC was on the head and it's 50 CC. So when you want to figure out what your uh, compression ratio is going to be, you need to CC your heads. You need to know the size of your crank, the size of your pistons, and then you also need to know your deck height. So when you CC a, a head, you wanna make sure that, or your combustion chamber, you wanna make sure that your head is sitting level. And you can do that real simple with like, a, I don't know, like a square, or just a whatever type of jet level you happen to have around. Set that bad boy up on here and then get it to uh, level. So you get it nice and level, or pretty darn close to level. These kits are pretty cheap. Pick them up on any of the uh, Volkswagen websites. And people use all kinds of different stuff to create a, like uh, a ceiling surface between this little plastic doodad and uh, the uh, cylinder combustion chamber area itself. I just use Vaseline. So like you put a nice thin coat of Vaseline on here, stick that bad boy inside of there, and then you fill it up with some sort of fluid. I like to use mineral spirits because it uh, fills up and doesn't have any real air bubbles, which can be a problem if you use water. But I've used oil and stuff too, but mineral spirits cleans up really quick. And it's not uh, such a hassle. Take out the little syringe that comes in this kit. You fill it up with the fluid, and then you fill up your chamber here to figure out what your CC is. That's how you figure out the uh, combustion chamber CC part of the equation. All right guys, so I got the deck height tools installed here. <clears throat> I got a couple of them. Both of these I picked up from CP Performance. You can also get them from like CIP1 or JBugs or wherever you buy your Volkswagen parts from, they'll have a deck height tool. So what you wanna do is pretty straightforward with the digital caliber. All I'm gonna do is I measure the actual width of the the uh, tool, the deck height tool. So let me see if they're both the same, which I don't remember if they were both the same thickness or not. <clears throat> I think there was a slight deviation 
between the two of them. So this one is right at about eh, almost 12 millimeters. And this one is, yeah, right about 12 mil millimeters. So what you do is you take that measurement, you, you, you need to account for that and you can just re-zero out your digital caliber and then we'll go ahead and check deck height. And I use the this portion right here on the tool and just kind of plunge it down in a few different areas to give me three different measurements and then I take the average of the three. So let me back you out a little bit so you can see me go through that process real quick. There's lots of different ways to check deck height, guys. You can use a straight edge on here. This just makes it easier for me. So this one corner over here, we're sitting at 1.67 millimeters. Stock engine compression ratio. So stock is anywhere from like 7.5 to one to like, uh, like seven, eight to one. And with the measurements that I was getting, so there's my three measurements over here, the three measurements for what the deck height was. And then we take the piston size, it was 85.45 and the crank. And then we can figure out the compression ratio guys. So here's some numbers. I'll go ahead and leave it right there for a second to show you what we're working with on this side for the one, two piston and cylinder compression ratio. CB, CB, performance, uh, CB, compression. This just comes up like a calculator. CB, performance calculator. It's one of these ones, there it is. See, engine calculator. So hit the engine calculator. Go ahead and go to the website. And it's right here. Whoa. Real simple for you guys to figure this stuff out. So engine bore. That's your piston size, guys, if you weren't sure about that. So 85.45. The engine stroke, so that's the crank, how far the throw is on the crank. 69, and we're gonna switch this to millimeters. And we'll go ahead and use the, uh, the number one deck height, which was 1.71. Stick the CC in for the combustion chamber on the cylinder heads. And then we'd pick compression ratio, and it'll tell us what it is. Compression ratio, see? And we are at 7.6 to 1, 1583 cc engine, guys. That's how you figure that out. Ooh, yeah. So we install your rocker arms. You can see I have not built out this one to the solid, solid shaft yet. But when you install your rockers, you want to have a little bit of something sticking out here. And you can see this is kind of like what I was dealing with when it came to how these adjustment screws were in uh, come into contact with the, the valves stems themselves. And that's not good. I wanted to see a little bit coming out here, like like two, two or three threads past the end of this portion here. So like two or three th uh, threads outside of here so that we have a good movement on these rockers. And I wasn't getting that. This is, this is about what we're wanting to see. And I was getting all kinds of uneven crap going on here. So let me go ahead and get the head back on here and run through the cycle a few times after I adjust the valves to six thou. And I'll bring you guys back and show you where we are. And that'll probably wrap it up for this video, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this content if you're enjoying it. Hit the little thing off to the side there. Enable notifications. Yeah, all that good stuff, guys. So, so this is one of these things that we do probably about a million times. And I'm doing it right now. And I don't know how you guys do it, but I like to kind of lock down that six thou, <laughs> six thou feeler gauge in there whenever I'm doing this. I don't like to kind of have that loose fit with the six thou. I guess loose is better than too tight because you don't want it super tight, but uh, yeah. Six thou in there. And right now I'm on the number one cylinder and we are adjusting the valves. And you can see that that one is way out of whack. And the way that I do my valve adjustment is see it's kind of nice nice trapped it's it's in there good you know it's not going anywhere but uh it won't fall out either cool so we'll check it again real quick yeah see that nice drag that nice drag i got going on there with that six now very good now we're gonna go ahead and do the number two and all i do guys to get in position for my number two is right now i'm on the zero 
or top dead center on the crank. And this isn't uh, really hard to see, I guess, but the zero, five degrees, 10 degrees, and the, uh, the, the crack in the case, of course, is where you line this up at. So all I'm gonna do is go 180 back to the, to the, the back side of the, the pulley here. And I got a little mark on here. This one actually has it to where the 180 mark is. So I'm gonna 180 back and that'll be number two. And this is a really easy way to do this. Let me see if I can do it with one hand. <laughs> with, you, with you guys kind of like hanging out with me. Let's go ahead and bring it back. Oh yeah. I can, I can hear the compression. And this thing has not even, uh, <laughs> this new, this new uh, build has never fired. So where are we? Where's it at? Where's that mark? I think I went by it. I did go by it. You went too far, Jay. There it is. So put the 180 mark on the crack in the case. And the way to check that, to make sure that you are on number two, is that both the intake and the exhaust valves or rockers should be loose enough for you to be able to move them. Let me go ahead and do six style on this. And we'll see if we're good to go with that adding of the shim. Good stuff, guys. Be back in one second. All right, everything is adjusted to six thou. Just work through this motion a few times so I can take a look at everything. Oh yeah. Yep, adding that 30 thou shim to the bottom of the uh, cylinder itself made me a lot more happier because I don't have to add any shims to the bottom of the rocker stands themselves. And that was the whole point of this practice, <laughs> going through this process to get everything right. Well, cool, 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 cool. We are wrapping it up, guys. And we are in a lot happier place when it comes to how the 40 horsepower is uh, set up now. I don't have to put any shims underneath the rocker stand to get the rockers out so I get that six thou that I need underneath here for that gap intake and exhaust valve. Good stuff, good stuff. Now I gotta get it all back together again. I gotta do the other side. I gotta finish up the solid rocker shafts here. I'm gonna do all that off camera. By the time we get back on this bad boy, I bring you guys back, the long block should be assembled and we'll be talking about what's next in the build. So I got this intake manifold down here. This uh, single port intake manifold, I gotta clean up and paint. Gotta take care of that. And then uh, we're gonna talk about this carburetor. This is a China replica carburetor of like a PIC 33, PIC 34. So I gotta set that bad boy up. It should be good to go, but we're gonna go ahead and run through the base settings on it with you guys. So yeah, that's it guys. Don't forget to, uh, I don't know, get out of your garage, do a little work, a little bit every day, makes a big difference. And I know that it's getting cold out there. So maybe you just get out of your garage, do some work and maybe you can't go cruising your baby. But you can do some stuff to get uh, moving on it. And I know that you guys are doing that, right? Getting down the garage, doing a little bit of something. I will see you guys in the next video. We'll probably be talking about uh, 40 horsepower stuff as far as carburetion goes and getting this manifold all set up. But uh, if not, we might be doing the new shift coupler upgrade. The one that was sent to me by King VW 61 Thanks again, buddy. Really appreciate you. Check out his website, guys. This website right here. Woo! his website to pick up some cool stuff for your VW. He's coming out with all kinds of cool upgrades that yeah, you might be interested in. Yeah. See you guys next time. This is Jason with JW Classic VW and Goose. Bye-bye, guys.